purpose. Uh, document types, again, the financial have been built workflow based upon each doc type. Uh, the action log that Claire started mentioning earlier, again, and then this allows you to see where it is. And this, this is going to change the way you do business and help you do business process improvement. Uh, again, part of what we're looking at today is shrinking budgets, ways we can improve the way we do things, how we're how we going to do that. Uh, I think quality is going to help do that in a lot of areas. One is through this action log and seeing some things we're doing. You can see where your workflow, it opens up the process and it really reflects the holdup. So if you've got something you shouldn't be doing or approval levels that probably don't make sense, this is going to really clearly make people understand where you've got some holdups. And the other thing I will tell you is that in some schools that I've looked at, and you know, with the manual process, for example, if you have a special process associated with, let's say, um, hazardous uh, chemicals, or uh, I know one school is doing research on laboratory animals, you know, those required special approvals before that purchasing department could even go out to purchase it. A lot of times on a campus, they don't know that there's an extra step that takes place. They don't know where the holdup is. It's been the wrong place that got the blunt of why it didn't. The appeal wasn't cut for how long? How come it took so long for my, they must not like me. So again, this will really alleviate some of those issues. And I, I really think you're going to find that quality's workflow is really pretty simple to put in place. It's defined a lot of out of the boxes there for you, and you'll be able to get started right away. With this, I'll turn it back to Sean. Thank you so much, Chuck. And, and Claire, thank you as well. Um, again, one of the advantages of open source is, is, the, is the lack of barriers to, to trying the software, and, and, and Quali Rice is, is no different. And we're actually at our smart working with a number of institutions that are, that are exploring uh, Quali Rice and, and trying to determine if it's a good fit for them. And, and again, fortunately, you can actually try it before you have to really commit to it. And, and we're helping organizations do that. Um, we've codified some of our processes into what we're calling the, the RISE proof of concept. And, and with that, um, it, it's uh, various phases and it can be customized, but what we're, we're finding that works quite well is um, on-site training and, and covering the basics of RISE, which is essential um, to, prepare your, um, to prepare your staff to, to begin to, to do things with workflow and we can, again, we can cater this to, depending on the needs and the, and the abilities of, 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 of the staff. But we, we tend to want to cover the basics of, of rice, um, and then at some point, uh, if it's if it's in the cards, we, we actually want to uh, go beyond the basics and actually start um, diving into the the actual workflow or application or process that you're trying to improve. And and that and our and our experts would work with your staff to actually um, work on that project uh, with you. And and again, it's. It's, it's very flexible. Um, it's a very low-risk way that you can e experience the value of, of, of workflow and, and Kuali Rice in general, and, it's, and it can be customized depending on need. And with that in mind, I'm having a little trouble advancing my slide here. With that in mind, I have one more slide, and again, it just talks about some of the values of, of the proof, proof of concept. And the, in the simplest way of des describing it, uh, the, 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 the real value of a proof of concept, it, it allows you a low-risk way of engaging your stakeholders to prove the fit of a solution before you have to really commit. And at that, I believe that the, the bulk of the content has been covered, and we do have uh, we wanted to provide time for questions and answers. We do have a couple of questions that we have in the queue, and I'll make sure that we get to those. Uh, we, do, we do open the floor at this point for any additional questions. Um, I do want to make one reminder before I get to the first question about Kowali Days. That's coming up in November uh, 17th and 18th. Um, it's, of course, highly valuable. It's a great opportunity to connect with your peers and to learn a lot about Kowali in two days, in fact, more than you probably could learn in weeks of, of doing your own research. So please keep that in mind. And in terms of our questions, uh, the first question I'll pose to, to Claire and Chuck, um, it, it was early in the presentation, and the question is, what if we want to make notes just to ourselves, 
not included on the dock when, when sent to someone else, rather than carried with the dock. Is that an option? Chuck, do you want to cover that, or do you want me to? Go ahead, Claire. <laughs> Sorry, I was okay. on mute. Um, that's okay. Um, notes can be provided on the document. Now, they travel with the document, so they can be modified as they go through. If it's a, if it's a note that, you'd, that you want to say, hey, um, somebody else take a look at this. Um, I'm concerned about the risk associated with um, this kind of purchase or the incompatibility or something like that. And the next person can, can make a note that says it's been reviewed. So for the most part, um, the, the notes absolutely get, get carried through. And um, for the most part, it shows kind of the history of, of what the considerations are, um, which gives you a, a better picture of all that goes on and has been re what the review process really is about. Um, so I think that the, the notes be, become very valuable to that transaction. Excellent. Well, thank you, Claire. We have another question from Sam Alardi, and the question is, can, uh, can workflow be used to manage business processes that are not document-centric? Oh, yes. Well, ab yeah, absolutely. That definitely can be. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be document-centered at all. And we're, we're doing that in other areas uh, already. And, and usually that's where they get into the uh, um, quality enterprise workflow. Can you provide an example, Chuck? Well, again, uh, we're, we're look, we've done that with stuff like, for example, for time and attendance, uh, where we've developed a, a different module, we've tied together with some of the other uh, systems that are out there that campuses have their legacy systems, where it, it needs to be able to, at an effort, a certain event occurs, uh, some something is uh, received or something happens that is supposed to be there before it starts up the process, it then triggers to workflow and sends either a message off to, to uh, then trigger some other activity to happen. And, and that in the time and attendance, it could be, you know, at the end of the month, it sends off a message saying your time, your, your time attendance is due. Uh, you need to fill out your time sheet. You need to do whatever you need to do, which then will start the business process again. Okay. Sounds like a reasonable right. answer. Well, and I would add to that that um, sometimes the process itself is about a document, but you don't want a lot of centralization to it, and you want to decentralize a lot of the flow of it. And, and this actually supports that kind of a thing where the central processing of it may be, um, uh, may be more of a systematic, not, not a person intervention. Um, on the other hand, it doesn't have to be specific to a document. I know at Delta, when we looked at how could we use workflow not just in, in, uh, in financials, um, we basically looked at a pro any process we were doing that was cumbersome. Uh, most processes, once they're pretty well decentralized, have some kind of a routing form that says it needs to go here, then it needs to go there. And we tried to look at what we had that was in that kind of a standard and say, can we make it a system process? Um, can we take that form and, and uh, make it electronic and make it route instead of just um, handing a piece of paper back and forth through in baskets? And uh, we identified a couple that were problematic for us, uh, one having to do with contracts, where it wasn't a financial transaction per se. It was really the precursor to a potential transaction. And um, we identified that more than 70% of our contracts were in one specific format. And so it would be fairly easy to make that an electronic format. Um, the other one we looked at, as Chuck mentioned, was a time and attendance. We didn't have a, a time card system of any kind. Um, it was all paper. And um, it was determined that the most important one, for some business reasons, was the time card one, even though it was the more complicated project. And uh, so they went, the uh, technical people went, moved forward and, and made that happen and made that work that time card didn't actually create a financial transaction until it was brought into payroll and then a separate process done, and then it fit transactions. Um, but it was 